Hey everybody, I'm Todd Anderson. And I'm Ross Miriam. And you're watching the Versus series by StarCityGames.com. Welcome to day two of our walk through the Hall of Champions. Well, half half champions. <laughs> Half people that were sad right when they lost, but pretty happy afterwards. Yeah, so uh, what me and Ross did this week is we picked uh, five of our favorite Pro Tour finals over the last uh, roughly 10 years. And we tried to stay away from like mono-red decks because mono-red <laughs> decks have had uh, historically great performances in Pro Tour well, finals. I wouldn't say historically, but over the last three years. Yeah. I mean, even uh, how long ago did uh, Joel Larson win with Mono Red? About three years ago. Okay, and then my what? number was chosen strategically. But I think even before that, uh, the year before that was won by Mono Red too. It was the couple uh, months before then, Martin it, Dang. Yes, that that was. I think he the was the, Red. He was the start of of this yeah. like Mono Red revolution with so many cheap aggressive creatures and burn spells, and it's, this is not something we haven't seen in Magic before, but. You know, there there was a time where where mono red was viewed as like a subpar deck, like it was the the noob deck. Like if you were just getting into Magic, it was this deck where you could just win sometimes because you put some creatures into play on the first few turns, threw some burn spells at your opponent, or cleared the blockers, and you just let your you know uh, your your cheap creatures do a lot of the heavy lifting. Uh, but over the last few years, a lot of these cheap red creatures have been able to generate more red creatures with things like Goblin Ravel Master. Uh, they have hit harder, like there's more two power creatures for one mana with things like Fire Drinker Seder and such. Um, and even more recently, you know, Bowmat Courier can generate a ton of card advantage. Scrap Heap Scrounger, other things turn on unlicensed integration. Yeah, red has certainly uh, gotten on its, its just due in the last couple of years. But we are playing very a little bit of red. You've got some red in your deck. This is... Yeah. This is not a red format. This was a multicolor format because this is Pro Tour Cons of Tarkir. Yeah, and, and this was where we really saw uh, things kind of slowed down a little bit in a lot of respects because uh, each of the, the cons, uh, what what were they called? Wedges. Wedges? Yeah, but they were, were they clans? or Yeah, were they clans, just... yeah. Anyway, e each clan got its own tricolor land and it entered the battlefield tapped and that meant that you had a lot of Lands entering the battlefield tap because all the the temples the the two color temples that scry yeah, from Theros blocks so yeah. just a lot of great mana fixing a lot of three color decks and this was a really fun pro tour I was there were you there I was not this was in Hawaii yeah I actually ended up playing uh, scissors uh, I was playing an insole artifact deck that used uh, Helios Pilgrim to go get it and I thought the deck was great and and you're gonna look at me like I'm an idiot I played roughly a hundred matches on Magic Online and I think my overall record was somewhere around 80%. But that's the danger of testing on Magic Online, especially in the early weeks of the format. No one knows what they're doing. Yeah. A lot of people were trying out all the different guilds. We weren't sure which one was, was best. A lot of the metal... Uh, every single one had some splashy cards mm -hmm. that you thought might be really good. As it turns out, there were two of the five guilds that were sort of better than the other... Th Three, and those are the two that were represented in this Pro Tour Finals. So uh, you were playing the Jeskai side of things, Mantis Rider, yes. represented by Sean McLaren, the Jeskai guy. Mm -hmm. And I am playing Arielax's eventual winning Abzan deck. And as we all know, Abzan went on to sort of Abzan's dominate that best, year. Man. Well, it didn't just dominate that year. It was also a, a resounding force uh, the, the next year with... Battle for Zendikar block, uh, once it came in, you know, we got access to better mana bases. Uh, I believe some of the Abzan decks even splashed a fourth color every now and then, just because it was basically a free roll. Uh, but you had uh, then access to things like Gideon, Allies, Zendikar, so you became a little more slanted towards uh, the aggressive side. Yep. And you made good use of things like Anaphens of the Foremost and Siege Rhino. Yes, well, Siege Rhino was just... I don't. We don't need to talk about Dr. Siegeman. I mean... <laughs> MD. Uh, <laughs> rest in pieces. Uh, no, Siege Rhino is this, this insanely good card that, you know, I, I compared Nicol Bolas the Ravager when it came out to Siege Rhino on the type of impact it can have, as well as uh, the type of games it can produce. Because you can play a, a grindy longer game with a card like Siege Rhino or Nicol Bolas Ravager where you utilize the, the Enters the Battlefield trigger to gain you some sort of long-term advantage. And you, you press that advantage by playing more copies, even if the first one dies, it's okay. 
But if you start combining them with aggressive elements, you know, you actually uh, can make these cards your top end or as close to the top end as you want. Um, and their abilities are also really good when you're being aggressive because you're getting a four power body uh, with a good trigger, you know, on top of these early pressure things. And you're, you bottleneck your opponent into interacting with your first few cards. And so then your four or five trample just survives. And that's yes. bad. <laughs> yeah. We, we saw it work in so many different types of decks, like up to near control decks, where the life gain was the most important part of the trigger to buy right. you time. Um, in mid range decks, where both parts were good, if you were really far behind, you could, needed the life to turn it around or to give you time to turn the game around. But once you did turn the game around, suddenly your opponent was at three, six, and maybe even nine fewer life than they started. It was a lot easier to turn and end the game very quickly. Right. So that turning the corner part of mid-range decks was important. In an aggressive deck, the life loss on your opponent's side gave you reach. So, uh, and, and then we saw a blending of them where the different abs and decks that started one way and could side up or down, get more aggressive, get more controlling mm -hmm. as needed. And that, that was really the, the calling card of this format where there was... Every deck had different ways to sideboard, and you had to figure out how your opponent was going to play against you and react to that, as opposed to just having a generic sideboard plan. Yeah, it, it was it was a really interesting format because a lot of these decks could change roles uh, after sideboard pretty easily. Because when you have access to three colors, you have a wide array of of things at your disposal where where you can transition, like you know, take out a bunch of your removal and board in things like duress and more planeswalkers and and cheaper threats. Um, and when you're, you want to be more controlling, you know, you can board in more removal and side out some of your cheaper creatures, you know, things that put pressure on your opponent in favor of these like game closing effects that can devastate the early plays of your opponent. Yeah. And Jeskai did the same thing that the initial configuration is pretty aggressive. We've got Ravel Master, Mantis right. Rider, Burn Spells, or Stoke the Flames, but there's also some dig through times and late game cards. So you can cut some of the aggressive elements, bring in more late game cards. And I think that helped a lot in this matchup which in general Jeskai was a little behind in because Siege Rhino was just matched up well against Mantis Rider. Yeah, and the the removal spells weren't that great at actually dealing with Siege Rhino. You know, I, I if I'm not mistaken, uh, Roast was, was, was legal? Print, no, it was printed that winter. Mm. So Ro Roast was actually not quite legal yet, and, but once Roast was printed, that became Jeskai's easy answer to Siege Rhino. And, and, and there were Valorous foremost. Dance, which was, which was also printed that winter. Right. Uh, right. Uh, anywho, uh, but yeah, you're, you're going to see Siege Rhino come down quite often and me just not be able to deal with it and hope that I can punch through enough damage to win. But the ability of Siege Rhino was so good at keeping that from happening that, yeah. you know, that's ultimately why I think Arilax ended up winning this tournament because this deck, you know, it, it can beat you even if you cast a Siege Rhino, but it's not easy. Yes. You need you need some help. So yeah. we'll, we'll, we'll see. You got three games. <laughs> All right, well, let's go ahead and get to the match and see who takes down between uh, Ari Lax's Abzan and Sean McLaren's Just Guy Aggro. All right, high rolls to you guys first. Let's do it. Nine. Okay, did better, did better today. Oops, six. Ooh. All right. Yeah. Don't you need win. to see the other die when the first one has a one. That's true. I don't know. The other one could have been a ten. I I sneak in a ten-sided die over there. <laughs> Ooh. That was a good last card. Now this hand's great. Okay. I'm going to keep this one, but I don't love it. Okay. I will start with a Temple and Scry. There's going to be a lot of lands yeah. in the battlefield tapped in this matchup for sure. Yeah. Do not need another land, so we can send that one to the bottom. Three of mine inner tapped. I don't know how many here's <laughs> two. All right. Um, so we want to make sure we have white on turn two, but I also want to make sure I don't draw another land here. So we're going to play this. Uh, Yeah, we're going to keep it. Sorry. Lucky. I don't want to say what it is, but it's good. Still can carry out it. That's one I ain't seen in a minute. Go. Ooh. Getting aggressive here. Um, Seeker of the Way was one of my favorite cards in this format. Um, for not only the the Just Guy decks, but also it was very good. Uh, well, that's a good one. Yeah. It was very good against. Uh, are in the, the Bant Heroic decks as not quite a heroic creature, but it got a bonus every time that yeah. you... Uh, it was a really nice secondary creature. Yeah. So deck. you took one, so you're just going to be at 22. I'm and gonna you'll be, be at 17. 17. Yep. Yep. Carry added into Cedrino Igud. All right, so I need to get some pressure on the battlefield. I think I can afford to take a hit next turn. 
So we're going to play Mantis Rider. I'm going to take one to 16 and hit you for three. I'm a 19. So 16, 19. Your turn. And right now we're basically not blocking next turn for fear of a removal spell. So we're basically already at 12. And all he's done is attack once and cast a Siege Rhino. 12, okay. 19. Um, yeah, I guess we'll get the card advantage train rolling with this Courser. Yep. Uh, I'll gain a life, go to 20, mm -hmm. and I will Thought Seize you. All right, you want one of the Stoke the Flames is or a Just Guy Charm? Oof. Yeah, next turn's going to be real good because I get to attack with both and Stoke the Flames this and gain three life, which yeah. is nice. Yeah, I was hoping this Thought Seize could take a Stoke, but seeing two. I think you might want to take this just because this can actually get this off the battlefield for Yeah, a turn. I agree. But... It's you, close. You I, think, I think it is close. All right, and we do yeah. want to, to scry thing, and we didn't draw anything that changes our play, so we're going to go ahead and play this. Ooh, that's a good one. I think this is a good one. Yeah. Okay. All right, uh, declare attacks with these before blocks. Yep. Stoke this, trigger this. You're going to take six, and I'm going to gain three up to 15. So 12 to 15. Yeah. Um, I had you at, wait, I had you at 20 and then taking six. I got oh, took you from the thoughts. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so what are you at? 12. 12. Okay. And you're at 15. Yeah. So that other thought sees, he's likely going to want to draw it and take the stoke the flames out of my hand. Yes, that is indeed what I want to do. So, um, let's do that. Okay. Drew land. Uh, that brings me to 16 or brings it to 10, 10, I mean. And then I'll attack for four, yep. bring you to 11, mm -hmm. and pass the turn. So there's a good chance that this gets hit by an Abzan charm. But I guess he probably want to hit this with an Abzan charm. Maybe? So that'll put him to four. I wonder if I'm not supposed to attack with Rhino there. I don't know. All right. Uh, we're going to fetch, play this, trigger this. And I'm going to tick up, and that's going to put it out of range of dying to the Siege Rhino attack. So I have one white. So I guess I, go on, I want a second white. So I guess I don't have... I have Dig Through Time, so I don't really want to take damage. Do I have a double white card in my deck? I don't believe so. I'm basically just splashing white. So Yeah, I feel like I made a mistake attacking with Rhino in the last turn. Right. But. Uh, declare tax. Yep. And do I want... To Block. I don't think so. Yeah, so because he's not going to be able to kill it with damage next turn other than using Abzan Charm to uh, put counters on the Rhino, he's just going to exile this. You're going to take 6 down to 4. I gain 3 up to uh, 13. 13. So 4 to 13. So now all my Stoke the Flames Jeskai Charms are lethal now as well as Sarkin. If I draw another Sarkin, Scry. And Manus Rider is a... I like that one. Decent one as well. Attack for four. Yep, and nine. nine. Pass. Go for it. Connect four. Yep, you're at one. I'm at nine. Here go. Actually, mm. you know I have this. I'm going to go and play this. Yeah, I'm just dead to the other Mantis Rider. I left this Courser on top to try to gain life, and it doesn't. Oh, that's a big old yikes. <laughs> <laughs> you could have fetched it away. Oh, you're no, one. one. You're one. You're one. <laughs> yeah, I could not do that. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Yeah, that one... That one attack was too aggressive. If I'm at four, then I've got, you know, like I go to five. You could have chumped. I th I think if you're so, I I think if if you had chumped with with the courser or with the uh, the carry it because you had plenty of mana, right? Like you don't have six drops in your deck, and you already had five mana without it. Maybe just four. I don't know. It it was definitely close. I think attacking like you have to try to kill me because you have to answer mana rider. And any other haste flyer over the next few turns, anyway. Well, I had two Abzan charms, and you had one Mantis Rider, and then you just like played Sarkin, and then ripped Mantis Rider. So I yeah. didn't, I didn't, I thought I had the the board clear, and then like I thought that I was, it, you were going to get more attacks out of the Seeker if I chumped than if I was able to block the two two for a couple turns. Sure. While I'm racing the top of your deck. All right, well, let's go ahead and take a look at sideboards. Okay, we're here for sideboarding. Uh, on my side, we saw me sort of get run over by a fairly aggressive draw from Todd, and in sideboarding, I just want to bring in my cheap removal to ensure I get to the late game. Right. Generally, I think my cards are more powerful pound for pound, so if we go long, 
I'm going to top deck a lot better than him and my, my more powerful cards will take over. I am willing to cut some of those powerful cards because I think I have enough even without like an Elspeth, which gets attacked pretty easily in the air. Uh, and I still have one other. And then a Johnny, which often does, which doesn't really affect the battlefield. Like putting counters on your creatures isn't great unless you're getting aggressive. Um, and I don't want too many expensive sorceries when Todd's a blue deck, so you know he has access to counter spells on the sideboard. Right. Then I'm bringing out Elvish Mystic because I think I just want to spend the early turns interacting with Todd, keeping his battlefield clear rather than accelerating into my own game plan. And Elvish Mystic is a weak top deck, so we'll, we'll trim those. Well, also, Elvish Mystic uh, in, in these decks, it was more of a concession for the mirrors anyway, because like you wanted a little bit more acceleration because you had so many lands that enter the battlefield tapped, and it dodged a lot of the conventional removal in the mirror matches because uh, things like Abzan Charm don't affect it. Uh, you didn't really play a whole lot of two-mana removal spells in that format. So an early Elvish Mystic in the mirror was just a way for you to catch up when you were on the draw. Uh, or put you super far ahead when you're on the play, letting you cast your Planeswalkers or Siege Rhinos first. Uh, in this particular matchup, like, you know, I don't think you can reasonably expect me to board out, like, all of these burn spells, and Elvish Mystic is, like, the only target for them. And I don't even think accelerating is what you want to do. I think you want to slow the game down. I think bringing in all the removal spells is smart because you have these big top decks that I actually kind of have trouble dealing with. Like, you saw the Siege Rhino hit the battlefield. I had Jeskai Charm and two Stoke the Flames, and none of them really did anything. I had to be the aggressor, and I actually had to just kill you with flyers. So I'm going to try something a little different here for sideboarding, and I'm going to be bringing in uh, counter spells to help fight... Um, the removal of my creatures would negate as well as some of his uh, late game stuff, uh, like his Planeswalkers. Uh, in Hostilities is a reset button if I fall behind. Uh, you know, I, I think he's going to do a pretty good job of killing my early stuff, and if he gets a couple creatures on the battlefield and kills my stuff, I just want this as a, a clean reset. And then uh, some Dissolves and Disdainful Stroke to handle things like Siege Rhino, more expensive stuff. And then Kranos has a card that's just kind of hard for him to deal with. This card is never going to get turned on. Never, It's never going to be able to attack. But that's okay. You know, yeah. it's going to generate some card advantage. It might let me uh, combo kill a Siege Rhino or a Planeswalker with a Stoke the Flames. And and I think that that's just good enough. Uh, these removal spells don't have any targets other than the face. These were more for the opposing Seeker of the Way decks or the other aggro decks in the format, like Heroic, uh, as well as Anger of the Gods. Like, there's a reason why Anger of the Gods is in the main deck in this format. When you're playing Goblin Ravel Master and you're playing Seeker of the Way and you're playing Mantis Rider, sometimes you just needed that uh, clean sweep early in the game. So. Yeah, and uh, important to note that the burn spells are also good in game one because you're the aggressive deck that you can help finish the game out. In the post board games, you're less likely to be in that situation right. because I'm bringing in cheap removal. I'm going to be protecting my life total more aggressively. Right. Uh, and if the burn spells aren't killing you, then they're not really doing anything. Okay, we're here for game two. I'm on the play. I have a pretty strong opening. This uh, this combination was pretty uh, devastating during its time in standard, and so hopefully it does some work here. All right, uh, as you can see, we, we have a little trouble on the mana here, but I think that's just going to be common. And But we can find our way out of it with the temples, so hopefully they help. I have no trouble at all. Stands up at all. Oh, Mana's lucky. perfect. Yeah, mine, mine too. I just drew, I drew, <laughs> drew the nutters. Um, we, that is a fifth land that we may end up needing, but I think I just want to find some things to do in the meantime because our, our, our late game spell is not particularly desirable at the moment. Yeah, this is how we can lose for sure. Just turn two carry it into turn three siege rhino while we have a bunch of tap lands. Your turn. Okay. Well, no siege rhino, but uh, Courser is a pretty good one. Ooh. Oh, yeah. That's a nice one. All right, Gain so one. 21. Um, That's a good one, too. I've got some removal in my hand. I actually want to send that one and find some threats here, I think. That one's not so good. All right. Uh, so I'm a 21. You can go. All right. So my current problem is that if I sit on my hands... He already has the Courser. He can continue to hit land drops. The problem is if I just play Mantis Rider, uh, that doesn't really accomplish anything. So I think I might just have to wait as much as I don't want to wait. Hmm. Uh. All right, I'm just going to hit you for three. 
Uh, kind of. So if he doesn't 19, kill it, we can just start chipping in more damage. I'm like, at 18. Yep. All right. 19 to 18, is that what we said? Yep. Attack. Nice um, freebie attack here. Todd doesn't know if I have Absinthe Charm. Yeah, I think. Wow, this is tough. I think I don't block because I want him to use the Absinthe Charm on the Mantis Rider. So I'm just gonna. Actually, I kind of want him to just cast Absinthe Charm this turn, and if I if I block, he's gonna cast it no matter what. And I'm actually not that afraid of, of this as just being a big thing. Uh, I have I have some ways I can get off the battlefield. Not right this second, but I I just don't want him to cast like a, a Siege Rhino or a 5 drop. But he didn't Siege Rhino last turn, and we we saw his draws. So we have to figure out like what 5 drops we're really scared of. And I can't assume that Johnny's in your deck because it's I don't think it's that good in this matchup. I just can't remember the 5 drops. Were there any wingmate rock? Oh God! Hold on. <laughs> All right, I'll block. I might have to raise a wingmate rock. <laughs> All right, that's fine. Two counters. It's not great, but uh, I'll play this. Go to nineteen. Scry one. Yep. I'll leave the planeswalker on top. So nineteen all. All right. Uh, we're gonna I play like... Rail Master and hit you for one. Sure. All right. Put you to seventeen. Uh, 18. I gained one from Corsair Lester. Right, right. Sorry. All right. Not in the best shape. Go back up to 19. Yep, 19 to 19. Downfall of the Travel Master. Attack for four. Yep, 15 to 19. Pass. I have a Soren in hand. Um. Yeah, this is where Corsair just starts to bury you. So I go to twenty. Yeah. Now I'm not sure if there's a thing that Todd can play here that kills the Corsair. Like a five damage burn spell alongside a block. No. I don't. Yeah, I don't think there is, and I think any combination of two burn spells would kill it outright anyway. Mm. Uh, Magnum. Magnum. Or. Er, Magma Jet Lightning Strike, but... Yeah. I'm going to play a Soren. I'm just going to... I can kill that pretty easily, but I can't really deal with it plus the the token at the moment, so... Uh, attack for four. Yeah, we'll take four at 11. 11. That's the turn. And I know you have a downfall, or did you bottom Yes, that? you know I have a downfall. Okay. Oh, can't do that. Crap. This is not great. Go. Okay. I'm in some trouble. Don't you fret. Attack for four. Yep. Uh, You're at seven. seven. I've turned into the beat downs. Yeah, I mean, me blocking might have been a, a mistake. I was just trying to do, like, worst-case scenario. Play a Corsair. Uh, yeah. Gain two life. 22. Yep. yep. Pass the turn. I'll try to stoke it. Sure. I will tap it like this. Yeah, yeah. Gain a life. Yep. 23. Yep. Attack for four. I'm going to block. Pass the turn. Dig through time. That's pretty good. Five. Six. Seven, seven cards. I'm just making sure. <laughs> it's been a while. <laughs> it's, ba it's banned in everything now. That card was pretty good. It's 
Now, we're in a spot where I'm sort of the aggressor. Todd's beating down, which isn't good when you're the counter spell person, but Todd's cards are generally cheaper than mine. Thing is, there just aren't a lot of good ways in that deck, I, I think, to kill a 4-6. Okay. I had a pretty land-heavy hand, so I was kind of sad to use the Abzan Charm to deal with the Mantis Rider, but getting the Corsa to a 4-6 was... Banishing a Light. Um, hold on. I know, I'm gonna let you... Okay. You can gain your life or whatever, that's fine. Well, first I want to draw two cards and check out the top of my deck. One sec. I think, since I don't care about the Bob Light really, so yeah, that's fine. Uh, I like that thought, Seize, so I'm not going to crack this. Okay. So I lost two life from that, so I'm at 21. Yep, 21, I'm at 7 still. You have Corsair, Bob Blight, Downfall, Downfall. and Thought Seize on top. Yep. Alright. Let's start with the Thought Seize. I'll dissolve it. Let's play a Corsair. Yep. That one's fine. Uh, play this and gain a life. 22. And pass the turn. How many cards you got over there? Five. Four. Go. Oh, keep drawing threats, so I'll get a life. Yeah. Twenty three. Yep. Attack for two. Five. And I don't think there's any point in playing this into a counter spell. I guess it would stop another dig, if that's what Todd has. But I'd rather make sure I resolve a threat. So Todd has Todd would have to have dig and no counter spell for me playing Siege Rhino to be right. Whereas next turn I can play two threats in one turn, and Todd probably won't have access to two counter spells. All right. Uh Sarkin minus. Go. Uh, seeing as I don't have another way to kill this, I'll EOT downfall. Yep. And now... Sworn plus Rhino. I'm at two. It's Rhino first. Two to... 26. 26. I think I'm going to Sworn minus since you're at two. Oh, that's what I assumed you would do. Sorry. Yeah. That's what I... So let's make a vampire. We got a Tom Ross over here? Should. Maybe not. Whatever. Okay, Vampire Night Fox. Tom's going to be mad. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to get one negative YouTube comment. All right, I'm going to end hostilities. That's pretty good. Yep, and then I'm going to Mantis Rider, your sworn. That's pretty good. I needed to land. I needed it real bad. Your turn. Oh, wild like that. Yep. And show you that I drew a good one. Yikes! <laughs> Yikes. I need, I need a lot of Aaron Barriches now. <laughs> oh, that's not good. All right. Um, in hostilities, Rob Master this for one. Go. In hostilities, not exactly ideal against three tokens, but. Got to do what you got to do. I'm at two. All right. I will send all three deals both. Um. Oof. So there is the problem here that if I make the natural block of double block Rabble Master, block a token, if Todd drew a Stoke the Flames or a Jeskai Charm or has one of those, what did you do with the scribe, by the way? Top. 
if if he has a a four point burn spell, he'll deal with the Elspeth, and that's a disaster. Uh, so I don't. I think I just need to protect the Elspeth at all costs, and that means blocking each one and letting the Rob Master live. All right, uh, your turn. This is a slightly slower way of doing things, and I could get punished by like a Sarkin or a Mantis Rider, but uh, make some more stuff and pass. I could also just draw removal spells, but. I mean, I'm at two. So if I stoke the Elspeth and then Sarkin it, I only have one blocker for your three things. I think I'm just dead. That was a good block. Very good block. You also go to just let Elspeth die, and then I have to kill two of your tokens to if not you, be dead. If you have Jeskai Charm, then you just plus lifelink. Yeah, yeah. And no, I, I think that was a really smart block, because if I do have Jeskai Charm, and you block like that, your Elspeth is boned, or I gain a ton of life. I don't know, whatever. Four here. Let's see if I can figure out how to survive. I probably shouldn't have kept the Sarkin, but... Can I survive? Let's see, I have to kill a token and just attack with one goblin, I think. It's the only way I can survive. <clears throat> yep. Yep. All right, kill a token, attack Elspeth with one. I'm going to let Elspeth go to one here. Your turn. Okay, scry. Yeah, I mean, I, I had the best chance of beating the Elspeth by you just drawing three or four land in a row, but it just didn't matter. Elspeth's too strong. Now, I think I just killed a Sarkin. Yeah, I think. Yeah, did. both at Sarkin, and then plus get more errands. All right. Well, that was a good one. Let's see what we get. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six. I don't think my graveyard matters at all. Two, three. Four, five, six, seven. Oh, baby, hold on. <laughs> <laughs> Think they're time so stupid. All right, so we can kill the Elspeth. And I'm at two, so if we do just this. All right, that's what it's got to be. All right, so let's do uh, this at you, these at you, and this at Elspeth. Is that? No. Well, I, these have to attack. This is definitely going to Elspeth. Problem is, do I want to tip my hand? I guess while you're tapped out, it's better, because if you draw a removal spell or seed draw, now I die. Yeah, all right. Uh, these at you, this here. Did you like, draw a Jeskai Charm? I dig through time, Ross. I yeah, dig, yeah. I dug, I dug it into through sure. time. I mean, my other option was not something that gained me life, but could have potentially stopped a, your next big thing. Just got terms plus one plus one on life linked everything. Yep. So you have to triple block here or not. Just you know. I mean, if if you're gonna gain a bajillion life, then I think my best bet is just dealing with the rabble master. Thanks so too. So, I mean, I, I there's I could just not. So here, here here's the thing: if I just don't attack with this, I would just not block it. You would just not block anything, and then you would take two damage on twenty six. And I I could just guy charm to gain eight life. Two four. Yeah. yeah, I actually that that actually sounds better. Just getting me out of sea Rhino range and having this route master line up really well with my tokens against your leftover yeah. tokens. So yeah, I'm I'm just gonna attack with just these. Yeah, no blocks. All right, um, and I, I think I want to do this just to make sure I don't die to a top deck. So yeah, I'm gonna you go have to, to take 10. a point to cast it. All right, okay, I'll go to nine, uh, gain eight life, and uh, I take four. Go to twenty-two. Uh, yeah, and your Elspeth dies. Oh, I did not think I was losing this game, and now yep. I mean it's close now. I mean, oh, you man. did draw a bunch of lands, and I drew a dick through time. So <laughs> it's another land. Another it's one. not a land. You you can go. What could it be that's bad? Okay. Thoughtsies. Ha! <laughs> All right. Uh, draw. Attack. Um, I think I want to leave 
two of these around so the Rabble Master can't start attacking until yeah. next turn. So I'll like block two well. of them. You take four of your 18. Yep. All right. Uh, Temple Scry, bottom, go. Go. Same attack. Now I'll just trade for them and hope to draw a removal spell. Take three or 15. 15. Temple Scry, top, go. That's a good one. That is a good one. You don't have many lands on your deck, though. So. <laughs> but you do have a lot of looks. That's a nice one. We'll leave that one on top. Draw. Uh, attack. Block the token. Yeah, you take, you're at 12. Yep. Your turn. Uh, right. 13. 13. Yep. So, 9 to 13. That's also a good one. Okay. Uh, all thoughts easy? Uh, I don't know if the scry is more important than the two life, since he's going to go Rhino into Elspeth. I might just have to run, like, Burn Spell, like, Stoke Stoke, or, like, Stoke Jeskai Charm off the top. Um, so you're going to go to 11, uh, and then Rhino's 14, so this is 3, 6, put you to 8. So, yeah, I have to draw a running 4-point Burn Spell, so that results. Okay, so that takes me to 11. Yep. And call us. Right, so you're at 14, I'm at Black 6. White. Yep. Uh, yeah, I'm at 14, you're at 6. Um, this attack is not good, so pass the turn. <laughs> take me time so <laughs> All right. Okay. Five, six, seven. All right, so this, this, that, this. What does that do? Ooh, what about this? That, that, and that. Uh, that's not enough. I need a uh, second Mana Rider. Second Mana Rider might actually just force him to shuffle away that Elspeth, which is kind of dope. <sighs> oh my goodness. <laughs> uh. All right. Um... Gotta make a decision here. One, two, three, four. Ooh. Maybe. So I actually have a Karanos too, and my Karanos is actually turned on with Karanos, Double Manus Rider, and Rao Master, which is pretty pretty sweet. But uh I don't know what Ross is it's clearly not a removal spell as last card in hand. My guess is it's either another Thoughtseize or a land. So I think this has to be the one, and then Karanos actually just blocks Siege Rhino, so I think I actually just take Karanos over Banishing Light. So, yeah, sure. All right, play both. Thank you for six. And then I'm going to try to Karanos to, to deal damage and block Siege Rhino. So. Oh, yeah, then this makes it. Yeah, yeah block it. Your turn. So I'm at eight. I don't think this Elspeth does anything now. Yeah, I, th I, I mean, I, I, I assumed you would have to shuffle it away because of the Mantis Riders. So I'm gonna stay at eight. Yeah. If you have a land again. Oh yeah. I, I definitely have a plane. So I have yeah, two yeah. planes, so I actually have exactly two more lands to get. So. Cool. Alright, so six to eight. The math uh, doesn't change significantly if he hits a land off the top because Kranos does three to a target. So he shuffles that away, so you stay at stay eight. eight. Yep. How many lands can I draw? I can't believe I might win this game. I mean, I could just hit land off this, and then he has another turn to actually maybe kill me. If he hits a, a, an Abzan Charm for this, actually, he would probably just Abzan Charm this, because this gets shut down. Maybe that's maybe I shouldn't have, but... This is basically Banishing Light plus Burn Spell, so... 
I don't know. It was close. All right, draws a land. You're not dead yet. All right, you go to nine. Half the turns. A non-land. Ah, crap. You get another draw. All right, what happens here? So I, I attack with this and these. These forced to block here. Here, nine. So it's three. Do I attack with the route master or not? Because I guess you just block here. You take seven down to two. That doesn't change anything, so attack. Um, and you have a token attacking? Uh, yeah, sorry. So which creature do I want to keep around? Probably just the Siege Rhino. Um, granted, I'm at 9 right now. So if I keep the Siege Rhino around, blocking like this, I go to 3. Mm -hmm. No, I, I actually... I'm just dead. Why right? are you dead? Well, the card in my hand is a brick. You even draw a cut, it kills... Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And it kills this. I only have one creature left. I Even if I gain a life off course or go to 4... You make another token attack with everything. I block here, take four. Yeah. So, yeah, I literally have no outs because I have a Thoughtseize in my hand. Cool. So, e even if you draw all hands, I was still deterministically dead. Okay, we're here for game three. Hoping to salvage this one, and I have a really good hand here on the play, so. All right, uh, my hand is not ideal, uh, but I think the games usually go long enough that I'll hopefully be able to draw out of this hand. We'll keep that one. Right. Go. So and carry added. Come on, man. Every game. Yeah. Not great. Your turn. Corsair. Yep. Gain unto life. Yep. 21. 21. Pass. Uh, crap. Go. 22. Yep. This is why Corsair's so good. Oh, that's easy. Negate it. Siege a rhino. Yep. Attack for two. So I'm at 25, you're at 15. That's what I got. Pass What's attack. your top card, sir? Sir! Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm so dead. All right. Let's just... Um... Put this on top. Go. Attack for four. Yep. I'm at 11. 11. Need top deck. Come on, top deck. Uh, Go to 26. Hold yeah. on. I'm not done. That's fine. Thought's easy. Well. I can't win unless I draw in hostilities right yeah. now. I have a bunch of just garbage that does nothing. I'm assuming this, but you could take this because if I am able to survive, I get to go double banishing light on the, the following turn. Yeah, that's the thing. I think I want to take a cheaper spell. Yeah. I mean, I think, so, I think Route Master is Yeah, Route Master is not here, doing anything. So. I'll take a banishing light. All right. Uh, 24. I don't, did you take two from your previous thought season? You countered it. I did. You're right. So you're at 24. Okay. Minus. Go. This is dead. You got a wingmate rock, probably. Yeah, rock you like a hurricane. Oh, no. You can go. We do have a bird. They're penguins. All right. Shoop, shoop, and doop. Triple route master, I'm dead. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, was, I'm not dead dead. I, I guess I'll play it out for... Because I, I can still draw... And hostilities. And hostilities, so... I will... Got the biggest one? Yeah, I guess so. I don't know. Go. If we had gone turn three, banishing light the courser instead of holding up negate, I would have gotten thought seize and a siege rhino. He would take my other banishing light. I could I'll have twenty two. Just guy charm the the siege rhino. The wing they rock just messed me up. Bad. Attack game two. Yeah, so I'm you're at twenty four again. You're at five. Five. Pass the turn. That's not it. You went. Okay. And this like this this format was. 
these games are rarely like that, but Wingmate Rock was one of the cards that could just shove it over the top, no matter how much removal your opponent had. If, if one creature got through, Wingmate Rock was just game over. Yeah. All right, so that was a, a pretty fun match, and even though I won 2-1, to one, Arilax actually ended up winning that match and winning the tournament in the best of five series. And, um, I mean, I think after sideboard, if you have a reasonable draw, I mean, you had to turn to Sylvan Carrot at all three games. Yeah. And that card is just really tough for me to beat when I'm on the draw because a lot of my uh, answers cost three, and I don't have a ton of, like, disdainful strokes and things like that. I just have one stroke, a couple of negates. So if you're carroted in a Siege Rhino or a Corsair plus a land, like, I'm just super far behind. Yeah, I had a very land-heavy draw there uh, in game two, and I think, one, I could have... The key turn where I played Soren plus Siege Rhino, mm -hmm. I could have blown my fetches and probably tapped in such a way to leave up the Bio Blight, and that would have been fine. I also, but it, it might have just been wrong for me to go for the play where I make my Corsair a four six. Um, like maybe you're, maybe you end up killing it sooner. I don't know if you had a four damage burn spell. I did. Okay, yeah. So I probably drew two extra cards off of that. I was thinking like maybe if I because I had downfall Absent Charm at that point, if I like Absent Char or d downfall your thing and then draw two cards for the Absent Charm, maybe that's better. But I did think that the four six Corsair. Oh, it was definitely four good. Burn spells I, was like, good. I was just trying to come up with like what's worst case scenario for me if if uh, if I block, and it was you play Wingmate Rock. You have me on a, a pretty stout clock already. Uh, I think I had taken a damage from a Shivan Reef or something, and Corsair had already hit me once. No, maybe it hadn't. I don't know. I just felt like if I didn't block and I just let you get free two damage in, then uh, not only Abzan Charm could just clear my next thing anyway, like it's, it's basically still trading one for one. You ended up dealing me uh, a couple extra points of damage, which ended up mattering, uh, or w was very close to mattering, but I was able to claw back. Yeah, um, so I think that ended up being pretty good, and for the reasons that I thought about at the time, it was just played that one turn with the double spell a little fast. Always want to leave the fetches up because if you're a Corsair deck, but yeah. in that scenario, playing around a Mantis Rider is pretty important because if you just play Mantis Rider and attack Soren, I don't really want to chump block, but I also don't want the Soren to die. So leaving a Bioblight has a lot of value, mm -hmm. and it's definitely worth cracking the fetches. So one slight mistake there you saw in a game where I was pretty far ahead for much of it. Um, and, and allowed Todd to, to claw back in. And that's that's a lot of how these matches went. They were long, so much like yesterday's match, you, you had time to claw back into games, and it was one of the reasons that people really liked this format, mm -hmm. because uh, very decision-intensive, and, and one small mistake sort of snowballed. And then uh, both players have a lot of good top decks. I ripped the Elspeth at one point, and then had another one, which you ended up blanking, but you had dig through times off the top. So a lot of dramatic draws, a lot of long games, uh, and there are a lot of iconic matches from that time. But this was sort of the beginning of it. Man, yeah. Just guy versus Absan was. I mean, con cons of Tarkir block and uh, even dragons of Tarkir after it just provided the format with so many cool multicolored spells. And a lot of people just love building around powerful multicolor cards. You get rewarded for playing a lot of lands to enter the battlefield tapped. Um, you, you have big payoff spells for just investing time and energy into building the correct mana base. And, uh, over the next year, once Battle for Zendikar came into the rotation, we had uh, this three, four, even five color decks that were just so interesting. And even though there was a bit of overlap in how like fetch lands worked with the battle lands, because you could get Prairie Stream off of Windswept Teeth or whatever, um, you there were still a lot of unique archetypes uh, that used a lot of the same mana base tricks uh, and a lot of the same you know general lands. And um, it was just a really interesting time for. Uh, exploring how to build mana bases, and it was just a lot of fun to me. Have you ever noticed how every standard format that is centered around a multicolor set is great, and every standard format that is centered around an artifact, artifact set, set is bad. broken? Well, just not fun, because... <laughs> I mean, they had to ban so many cards over the last and two years. Every standard banning since the original ban list has been as a re direct result of an artifact-based block. Yeah, well, about Reflector Mage. Mm. That got banned at the same time that... I uh, know, I know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean... You, you can make that argument, but, uh, I mean, I think that they would have banned Immercool at some point, even without Aetherworks Marvel in, in the mix, because I played with... I mean, I played, you know, Michael Major's Team Merge deck with, with Immercool, and, and that deck was so disgusting sometimes. And just the, the, the play yeah. pattern of interact, 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 play Immercool, win the game, was just 
boring after a while. You know, like the first couple times you cast Emrakul, it was like, oh my god, he cast this 13 mana spell, but really it was like an 8 mana spell that just, you're going to get there eventually because your entire deck is designed to kill things, sweep away creatures, play a bunch of blockers, you know, like Ishkana the Graph Widow. Oh, and Ishkana the Graph Widow into Emrakul, that's so, it doesn't matter, it's yeah, stupid. Em- Emrakul may be the exception. But regardless, I agree. Multicolored sets are great. I agree. The multicolored sets are great. I love mana bases that can be uh, flexible and uh, you can get punished for building it the wrong way. I like mana bases that uh, can like easily go two color splash a third. Fetch lands are great for that. And when you when you introduce fetch lands with the battle lands, you got just this unique uh, subset of 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 mana bases that I I just loved trying out new things. So, I don't know. Yeah. Uh, I was not particularly partial to having all my lands enter the battlefield tapped, but... <laughs> this format was a little bit different. Like, you could build the four-color mana bases so that you go fetch land, basic, fetch land, basic, fetch land into, like, a, a dual land that's neither of those colors. And oh, yeah. The, I once, thought that was Once awesome. battle came in. Yeah. But those those mana bases were just broken. Yeah, I mean, the, the, the temples, the monastery, the, you know, mystic monasteries and uh, the Abzan land, like, yeah, the, those mana bases, like, we saw in this matchup, like, oh, my second, third, and fourth land on the battlefield tap, but, you know. Well, Sylvan my, Carry added is great. Yeah, Sylvan, Sylvan Carry is great. I agree with that. Anyway, that's all we have for today. Mono um, combo. Yeah, we, I get it. It was block constructed in a, in a nutshell. <laughs> yes, it was. Um. Yeah, I mean, the, this format was a lot of fun, but uh, for me, honestly, it was more of a uh, a precursor to a much cooler format and really showcased how we could build mana bases leading into the, the Battlelands and, and, and such. So, I don't know. I, I miss it. I miss it all. I, I'm not a huge fan of the current standard format, even though I like the blue-black uh, mid-range no deck. Is. It's not true. Some people are. The people who do really well at it. <laughs> sure. Yeah. I don't know. That's all for me and Ross Merrim today, but uh, we're going to continue our saga into the Hall of Champions uh, tomorrow all the way through Friday. we got three more matchups for y'all ranging. We're just going to keep getting further and further back in time. Yeah, we just keep going uh, back. I, I don't want to spoil what we're doing tomorrow because uh, I just want y'all to just come in and look for yourselves. You know, It's going to be fun, though. So Make sure to join us for that tomorrow and for the rest of the week. For Ross Merriam, I'm Todd Anderson, and thanks for watching the Versus Series by StarCityGames.com. <laughs>